Do you want to live a life that's less problematic? In other words, a life where you make decisions and you know that they're correct and the decisions that you make, you know that they're going to help your life and maybe even help the life of your family? If the answer is yes, then this program is for you today. Hello everyone, I'm Jonathan Burns and thank you so much for joining me on Walking with the Word. Here on Walking with the Word, we seek to simply take God's Word, open it up, see what it has to say, and let it alter our lives as we study together. If you'd like to help us with that idea, go to www.twtv.org and click on the survey tab. And there you can suggest things for us to study right here on this program. Matter of fact, today's lesson is brought to you by someone who did that very thing, filled out our survey and helped us use their information on this program. We're in part two of a study of Matthew chapter five. Here's where we're going today. Oh, really? Just remember, your words live right. Over and over and over again, in the last part of Matthew 5, Jesus says things like this. You have heard that it was said to those of old. And then he goes on to illustrate how the things that you have heard are not exactly what you and I should be doing. The things that we have been told and the things that are said in society, they're not exactly what we should consider in our life. And over and over in Matthew chapter 5, in the last half of the chapter, Jesus does that very thing. He gives us what has been said and tells us what he says. Verse 21, you have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not murder. And whosoever murders shall be in danger of the judgment. Jesus goes back and talks about what people have said, and then he compares it to something he says. Verse 22, But I say to you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. Jesus takes it further. Jesus shows us where the root of the problem is. We go back to verse 21 in our minds, and we see it's about murder, taking the life. We go to verse 22 and we see what Jesus says. Whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause. You know, anger is a problem that's in our society. But anger is a problem that's been from the very beginning. You go back to Adam and Eve and Cain and Abel and there was an anger problem. There was an anger problem that brought one into danger because he was angry without a cause. And Jesus says here, you've heard it of old. If you murder, you'll be in danger. But Jesus says, I say unto you, if you're angry without a cause to your brother, you will be in danger of judgment. But you may be wondering, well, I can control my anger and I can get that under control. And boy, that's, that's true. But let's take this to the extent that Jesus is taking it here in Matthew chapter 5. Notice 23 and 24. Therefore, because of this anger problem against your brother, if you bring your gift to the altar and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go your way. First be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. Jesus here is illustrating that this anger, these conflicts that happen in life, he says, when you come to worship, when you bring your gift to the altar, I want you to pause there with me because remember where we're at in Matthew 5? In Matthew 5, we're talking about a time where people lived under the old law. We're not talking about New Testament worship here. We're talking about the worship under the law. But what I want you to do is I want you to think about this in a practical sense for you and I in this day. If we go to worship and we remember that one of our brethren has a problem with us, what should we do? We should go and be reconciled. These are the words of Jesus. We should go and take care of those problems and then come and offer your gift. What's Jesus saying? The way we live our lives matters. That's why I've entitled this point, Oh Really? Because what we do, what we do not do, what we should do and what we should not do, it matters. And it affects every area of our lives, even when we come to worship. So if you're angry with someone 
may I give you a suggestion? Go and make it right. Go and figure it out. That's oh really. Here's the next one we go to in our study today of Matthew chapter 5. Just remember. You have heard that it was said to those of old. Here's Jesus again. He's bringing our minds back to something that has been said, something that's been kind of passed down through the time. And look at what he says, verse 27. You have heard that it was said of old, you shall not commit adultery. Now, adultery is the sexual act of stepping outside the bounds of marriage. That's a shameful act. It's a terrible act. It should never take place. And you know what they said of old, you shall not commit? That is true. You should not do so. No one then, no one now should. But look at what Jesus does. He takes it to the extent of which it was meant. But I say unto you, that whoever looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. I want to ask you a couple of questions about this passage because I think they're very important. Uh, number one, I want you to go to the end of the passage of Matthew 5, 28. In his heart. I want you to think about the mind. And I want you to think about the power of the mind. Then what I want you to do is I want you to go to the first part of the verse. Whosoever looks at a woman. I want you to see the power of the eyes. The power of the mind. The power of the eyes. Then I want, to put, want you to put these two things into context. Looks at a woman in his heart. Jesus is talking to men here. Now this doesn't mean that Jesus is not talking about women in the negative. Whosoever looks at a man to lust after him already in her heart. I'm not saying that's not the case because that is still true, but I want you to see how it was said because I want you to understand something about men and I want men to understand something about men. Men are visual. And Jesus in this occasion, he talks about your eyes and he talks about your heart. Just remember what Jesus is saying. He's saying, men, you've got to get your heart right. You've got to get your heart right. He's saying, number two, you've got to get your eyes right. Men, there are places you should not look. There are places your eyes should never wander. There are places that your mind should never go. Get your mind and your eyes right. Jesus says, committing adultery, that is terrible, and it's true. But Jesus says, if you do so in your mind, you are just as evil. Now, what does this have to do with anything? Well, Matt, Jesus is teaching a lesson here in Matthew 25, or Matthew 5, 29 through 30. You see this. If your right eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and cast it from you. It's more profitable that one of your members perish than for your whole body to be cast into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and cast it from you. For it's more profitable for you than one of your members perish than your whole body be cast into hell. Is Jesus really telling us to... to cut off our eyes or cut out our eyes and cut off our arm or hands. Jesus is telling us here that if we look, we need to remove our eyes from those temptations. If our hands go to reach, we need to remove our hands from those situations. He says, just remember, your actions have consequences. Oh, really? Just remember, here's the next, your words. Again, you have heard that it was said to those of old, Matthew 5, 33. He says, again, this is what you have heard. It's been taught. It's been passed down. You know these things. He says, again, you've heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not swear falsely, but shall perform your oaths to the Lord. He goes on and says, we should not uh, swear, make oaths by heaven or by God's name or the earth or even by ourselves because uh, we can't even make one of our hairs white or black. But I want you to see what he's saying with your words. It's Matthew 5, 37. But let your yes be yes, and your no, no. For whatever is more than these is from the evil one. Just tell the truth. I'm going to be real short with this, because I think this is real simple. Just tell the truth. Just say what's right. Just mean what you say and say what you mean. Yes is yes. No is yes. It's no. In other words, what he's telling us here is be direct 
and mean it. Be direct and mean it. Your words have value. Oh, really? Just remember, your words, and here's the final, live right. Jesus, once again, reaches back to that phrase, you have heard that it was said. We started in Matthew 5, 38 here, and Jesus is talking about retaliation. Now, now you and I understand this, and before we even get to it, we understand that if someone hits us, we want to hit them back. That's Matthew 5, 38. An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. You black my eye, I'll black yours. You say something evil of me, I'll say something evil of you. You knock out my tooth, I'll knock out yours. But Jesus takes it further. Jesus takes it further and helps us understand. If anyone wants to sue you and take away your tunic, your coat, let them have your cloak also. And whoever compels you to go one mile, go with him too. Turn that cheek in the previous verses. In other words, live right. You know what he's really telling us here? Do you know what he's really telling us here? It's hard for us to see it. He's telling us to do what's best for others. We want others to do what's best for us, but he's telling us to do what's best for others. You go on in this segment and something interesting to me happens because in verse 43, he says it again. You've heard that it was said. What's he say? You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Boy, I think we still believe that, don't we? Love your neighbor and hate your enemy. We love those that love us and we hate those that we hate that hate us. But Jesus says something different. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. Pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. Why? That you may be sons of your Father in heaven. For he makes the sun to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the just and the unjust. Do you know what this entire segment's about, the last half of Matthew chapter 5? I know it's about live right because that's where we're at, but, but it's deeper than that. Matthew 5, 48 describes it. Therefore, you shall be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. Do you know what Matthew 5's about? It's about being like the Father. It's about living more like Him. And there are so many ways that Matthew chapter 5 could have been taken in our minds. But I wanted you to see Jesus comparing things that have been said, and then, but I say unto you. And if you'll understand what Jesus is saying, He's saying, be more like the Father. This really starts to make sense when we see the life of Jesus. Jesus time and time again says, I'm here to do the will of him that sent me. Do you know what he's saying? I'm here to be more like my father. And Jesus, in this occasion, is calling you to be more like your father, your heavenly father, your creator, your sustainer, your God. Be more like him. Live right. You see, in our program today, we've looked at the last part of Matthew chapter 5, and it was one of your favorite chapters. You suggested this and we studied it. But what I want you to remember is that you and I must take God's word, walk with it every day,